Sony Como se dice Hello, good uh, afternoon, everyone. So sorry to be waiting. We were trying to arrange for some um, technical things in terms of YouTube. So um, how is everyone today? So do we have participants? Uh, you, uh, those who are here, please do a little message that hi or hello uh, as we start. Um, we, for, so far for this uh, Zoom, uh, please promote to your friends um, that we are also live in... Uh, YouTube. So the the I'll, I'll post the link dito sa ating ano sa ating um yan. I posted the link for YouTube in our chat box so you can share this to your friends who were not able to register uh and were able, were not able to join in our Zoom channel. So um ayun, I know today is a very uh anxious time kasi medyo na extend ang ating um enhanced quarantine but I hope that you we all have this time also to take our uh Breather, then learn. Because and dami ding opportunity that we have this particular thing. Na natututo tayo in a new modality. Na maari ding maging mode natin with our students. Okay. Um. So yeah. So let me just share my slide. So thank you and welcome po sa ating uh, distance learning online teaching techniques and approaches. And I am your speaker facilitator today. My name is uh, Regina Sevilla Siba. Um, there are two um, slot of our uh, uh, of our webinar today. And by the way, um, just to please do uh, share your thoughts or comments. Feel free to ask questions, and then please do subscribe to our uh, Vibal YouTube channel. Let me just. So today our topic is going to be about online technique, 
techniques and approaches. Now, as school year 2020-2021 will not have a defined date yet on where it will start, we have an estimation. Pero, pero let's take this time also to learn that there is a chance that learning may, may or may not be in the same way that we have been handling it in the past years. So maybe this is also a timely uh, uh, topic on uh, redefining our skills and realizing ano ba yung mga kailangan natin additional skills? Are there additional skills that we need to develop in preparation for online teaching? Or do we have sufficient skills already from what we have? So thank you for uh, participating in this uh, particular webinar. And then please feel, again, please feel free to um, engage, ask questions, and then please also promote to your friends. Because remember, uh, caring, uh, sharing is caring, and, and also uh, teaching is also a sharing community. So for those questions, if you if I'm not able to answer your questions uh, within the within the we webinar because it's only one and a half hours, you. Me, feel free to message me via my LinkedIn account and then my email is my email for teaching stuff is also posted there. Um, again, uh, we're promoting our YouTube link to this particular webinar, which is being currently being broadcasted live. So before I begin, of course, I'm the first in this room um, that that has to introduce myself. I'm uh, relatively civil. I'm an educator. I'm a former uh, school administrator. I was a former principal of, uh, so shout out to my, for, my former teachers there in Miral Valley and uh, um, FEU uh, Senior High School. Um, but currently, I'm doing a lot of consultancy works now for uh, international and a government organization, and I'm working also uh, with the Department of Education. Uh, now, um, first of all, when you talk about online learning, it's important to do a little bit of attendance check. Now, I don't have an attendance list with me, but I do know that some of you are teachers. So uh, for those who are teachers, can you please uh, do comment on the chat box if you're a teacher, an administrator, so we get also a feel of um, how many um, of our participants right now are teachers, school administrator, coordinators, or you're just somebody who's a new graduate going to teach. Yeah. I'll, I'll take a little uh, minute to, or two to look at your comments. And it seems um, a lot of the participants who registered are actually uh, from the group of teachers. So um, in a normal setting, you should also acknowledge the presence of your students or recognize absence. But for this matter, I, I don't have a list. So I'm hoping that everybody is supposed to be in this particular webinar is already in. Okay. Now, just, I'll, I'll, um, as we begin any class, it's important to discuss the rules. So I'll just discuss first very briefly my rules for this particular webinar. First, I have a set of rules under listening. So first rule, Actively listen to the person or person speaking or sharing. Um, at this point, there were all at uh, this particular webinar. I'm going to ask questions every once in a while, or ask some people probably to share their thoughts and comments, chat box or share. Now raise your hand if you want to say something for those in the Zoom, and for those in YouTube, you can also do your comments in YouTube, and we are also monitoring um your comments so that we can also um answer them as needed. So listening, please do actively listen. So active listening means listen, opening our listening ears, also uh, looking using our eyes. So also look at what needs to be seen so that we can process what we hear. Kumbaga, parang classroom lang din, pareho lang din. Uh, pag may sudyante, kahit tayo, dapat po nakikinig at ta ta uh, unawain po natin kung ano yung napapakinggan. Um, at kung sino man na nagsasalta o nagbabahagi, mahalaga po na dapat ay tayo ay makinig at umunawa. Ikalawang ba, ano po, uh, pang set of rules ay, uh, is on interaction. So my rules for this particular webinar is if there are already opportunities where we ask questions or ask other people to share, please be kind, be open, and participate. Um, sometimes some people's opinions may not be the same as your own, but please make sure that we also respect other people's differences of opinion and other principles, especially in teaching. We have to be open to our students, where they will be coming from, what background, and trying to uh, reach a level of understanding. And that's what this webinar is going to be about. 
as well. Next is uh, my rules on pre preparation. If this is a class, of course, I would have had given you reading assignments. But of course, this is a one-time session. So just please do read your notes. If you want to take notes, please do so. If you want to have a later, I'll have a little exercise. So I hope you have your writing material and everything ready. If you have another device with you, like a phone, um, please have it because we, we might have a little activity at the end of this session. And um, please do note your questions. Or write them down so that you don't forget during the time that we open the floor for questions. And then our last rule, we'll set of rules will be on security. Let's consider that the webinar is a safe space. Let's respect our agreements, our rules. Res let's respect each other. And please, well, yung bawal po ang judge or judge judge or judge the ating webinar. Let's issue no judgments to people for sharing their opinions, their thoughts, and experiences. But feel free, as we said, active listening. So we can also ask questions if there are things that are unclear or things that we want to uh, uh, share with other people. Na parang tingin nyo, hindi makapaghintay yung ating uh, um, parang questions. Please do chat it so that we can, uh, one of our panelists can uh, flag the question and then we will answer it uh, as soon as we could. Okay, so malinaw na po ba ang ating uh, rules for our uh, um, webinar today. So similarly, in, an, uh, in an, any online class, make sure that you also have your clear set of rules. We'll discuss that in a bit. So, so next question, are you ready? Ready na po put ang ating participants? So, kung ready na po kayo, pwede po maglagay ng word na yes. For those in Zoom, please try the word yes. Or meron pong comment doon na yes doon sa ating participant box. Can you plug yes? So, I know how many people are ready. So, if almost everyone's ready, we can proceed. It seems everybody's ready. Let's proceed. Now, kung na, if you see the two pictures in the screen, ano po yung napapansin ninyo? Ano po yung inyong nakita? Any, meron po, pero may comment. Let me see if there, is, there are comments on, um, ano po, sa ating, ano, yeah, it's a picture of a virus from Miss Jonaline. And then, yes, they see it. Um, tsaka, ano pa, coronavirus and say safe. Tama, very good. So, thank you for sharing. Yes, it's, yes, and very good, Sister Mark Alexis, who mentions that it is about the quarantine. Now, man, Many times, nadidinig natin ngayon ang salitang, okay, ito yan, new normal. Pansinin po ang quotation mark. So, ito bang new normal na to? A lot of people are saying that given this particular pandemic situation, we have to realize that there might be a chance or opportunity conditions the environment is not the same as before. Na kung this pandemic eh, uh, parang extends further or there would be other situations na maulit siya, ito nga ba ang tinatawag nating new normal? So with this particular thing, I, I see these particular statements. Sa, sa pagkakataong ito, alin dito sa limang statement na to ikaw? Ikaw pa ba yung Yung iniisip na itong possibility of having online learning or the pandemic situation is a new normal bilang question o tinatanong mo pa ba kung mangyayari ito o hindi? O isa ka ba dun sa mga tao na iniisip na new normal, parang shock o may anxiety ba kasi ilang araw nang hindi nakakalabas? Ito ba ang new normal, parang is, is state of shock or anger ba ang nararamdaman mo? O tanggap mo na ang sitwasyon, ito ba ang the new normal? O ito ang the new normal na parang wala, hindi mo pa alam ang sunod o kasunod na kasagutan. O yung last na a new normal, tapos yung sign na yan, ibig sabihin, nire-ready mo na rin kung anong sarili mo sa kung ano man ang nangyayari at kung ito ba ang magiging quote-unquote new normal na sitwasyon. Kasi hindi natin ma-realize ka like ngayon, dati akala natin lahat stable. Right now, of course, may mga bagong nag emanate na uh, condition or circumstances na tayo na, na for sa ating current situation bilang guro, bilang administrador, bilang educator, o bilang, even bilang magulang para in, unawain ano na ba ang nagiging sitwasyon. At syempre, uh, dahil sa ating, uh, sa bilang, being in the academy, we realize also the importance of preparing ourselves for this, ano mga ba, new normal, new normal, new normal, new normal, 
a new normal. So, alin tayo dito? Um, at the end of the day, may mga bagay na we have to accept the reality. But again, the best way to deal with it is after we have gone through that phase of denial, reacting negatively or whatever, and accepting it, the next phase is now moving forward. So what's the next step and how are we going to go about it? And as a teacher, does this change our current learning situation? This Does this change my situation as a teacher? So ito familiar sa ilan sa inyo, parang itong ginagawa natin. We have a lot of series of online meetings and then I'd like to share this particular thing. Um, ito bang online learning ay eh, para lang ba sa ating mga younger teachers? I mean, given our situation, everybody has to adjust. Like this uh, public picture that I saw, that this teacher, yeah, he in his own way adapted to online learning by um, coming up with this um, online classroom. Pero dahil sanay siya sa environment na may upuan at nandun siya sa harap ng klase, he's not doing the online teaching in his own home, but rather went to a more familiar venue where he can teach, which is similar to some of us because some of us are uneasy with change and change is never easy. So we just have to have semblances of what our situation was before than what it is right now. So okay pa po ba tayo? And let's proceed. So as I said, I've always shown this slide in a lot of the seminars and workshops that I conduct. Um, at this particular day and age, it's important to have connectedness, intellectual quality, supportive classroom environment, and engagement with the difference. So in a classroom, these are expectations. Are we connected with our students? Do we have the competencies and we are, are we giving them enough competencies and um, knowledge and the skills? Is it a quality learning or is it just parang lower order thinking skills that we develop? Do we have a supportive classroom environment? Are the engagements, activities that we do in the classroom, do they, are they meant to make a difference or to develop our students? Now, even in a regular scenario, these are the questions. Ngayon ba, sa gantong sitwasyon, is it the same? Can we still, the basic question is, these four things, can we still, um, can we still, have this given a different platform. Let's say, kunyari nga, we are asked to teach online. Can you actually have all of these things still present? So just to clarify, no, because sometimes we have a little bit of misconception. So um, let's define first. Distance learning is not always equal to online learning. Paalala po sa ating mga guro at ano, medyo ano lang po tayo kasi hinahina eh. Kasi sometimes when we talk about distance learning, just an overview, it can be a lot of things. Now, according to Stern, these are some examples of distance learning. Like telecourses, if, like, let's like, say, example, if you are aware of some uh, science, math, or English shows broadcasted over TV, then those are, or radio, those are telecourses. And then when you talk about correspondences or uh, mail, yung mga dinideliver sa bahay ng mga books or modules, or you can the courses delivered, or ito nga yung ating magiging focus of the talk today, online learning. And then you can also have mobile learning using our mobile devices like cell phones to, to, to actually learn. Now, if some people ask me before this talk, what about the Facebook? I mean, Facebook, is a, if you use that for learning, it's not really a learning platform, but at this point, anything can be used for learning. It can be a combination of online, and then it can also be a system of mobile, depending on how the communication and the teaching actually happens. Remember that you don't always define online as distance. Distance can also generate through a lot of other things. Now, let's go to the bulk of our talk right now. First question, do you see yourself as an effective online teacher? Nakikita mo ba ang sarili mo balang araw o sa ngayon bilang isang epektibong online teacher? Yung mga guro na nagsimula na nitong mga online teaching and learning natin, nakita nyo ba na nasit, nakikita nyo ba na effective kayo? O tingin nyo ba ay may mga kakulangan pa o mga bagay na mas may improve ninyo sa sarili nyo? Sige nga po, baka po meron anyone, uh, let, let me check the chat box if anybody wants to see. Can you see, do you see yourself as an online um, teacher? Uh, an effective one? Or parang kinakapa nyo pa po ba ang sarili nyo? Parang paano nga ba ito? Paano ko pa just ma magagawa ito ng effective? And that's actually the the thrust or the the bulk of our work. Now, 
Um, I'm, if those who know me or who have attended my seminars, I like to use acronyms or basically similar lettered words to deliver tips most of the time. The, the, and you will find out why I frame the question as how do you see yourself as an effective online teacher? Now, when I was drafting the scripts, I was trying to cluster all the reminders that I set. So ito po yung magiging bulk ng ating talk or the content. So in, in defining ourselves as an effective online teacher, we have to make these preparations and all to ready ourselves for these things. So uh, very briefly, computer, content and curriculum, context, communication, collaboration, coaching, control or classroom management, creativity, and then the last C, which we will unveil at the end of this particular webinar. Uh, first of all, is the first C is computer. It's the most basic of all everything. You cannot have uh, it's supposed to be computer and connectivity because without this, your distance learning cannot be an online one. So for example, kung kayo ay walang device at walang internet connection, I am you will not be able to join this webinar. You will not be able to see uh, what it's like in YouTube. You will not be able to hear me. You will not be able to see this over your laptop or phone or whatever device that you are using. So again, that's very important. So let's just go through the basics. Um, because when online, when we are talking about online learning, it doesn't only talk about teacher being in school, and it also talks about you as a teacher being in your school, in your house, and your students as well. How is their connectivity? Where are they accessing it from? Um, merong mga, uh, minsan when I have online meetings, I hear about parents or teachers complaining about hindi ako makakonek. Like for example, lah, hindi kaya ng phone ko. So why? Because online learning, especially for those who which employ videos, sa kayo mga asynchronous and synchronous ab de ab ibat ibang methodologies, you have to have a particular band. Kaya pag medyo sobrang bagal o sobrang hina yung connectivity, then hindi kakayanan talaga. Especially if it's like a live feed like this na online. Um, you talk about, these are technical things, but again, you see in your phone, 2G, 3G, 4G. So, ano yung kayang mag, ano kapag meron ka na gumagamit ng online platform or, for example, a webinar or video sharing, it's actually employing 3G or 4G capability. Of course, we don't have 5G yet, but 3G and 4G are the ones, pag nakita niya sa phone yung signal yun, pag 2G at saka, ay, nako, iwala na. Hindi, hindi kayo makakakonek or hindi kayo makaka uh, synchronize with the activity that is happening. And then um, a little bit of reminder when also you connect, um, try to figure out where you are connecting at your home. If you are using Wi-Fi, please make sure that you are not situated near a TV. So alam ko kasi yung, a lot of the teachers habang nagbumultitask tayo, di ba? Nag-TV and then we're doing our computer. But do you know that the TV signal, if your uh, uh, Wi-Fi signal is unstable, it can cause interference in terms of your Wi-Fi. So if you want to do online class, focus. Go to a place na wala malapit sa microwave or oven or sa TV and then you put your station there so that it's stable. Especially if you're the cent na kayo yung nag-facilitate nag ng class, it's better to also have uh, a place in the house na medyo stable yung internet. And then, if you have problems with Wi-Fi, uh, there's a recommendation. Is it Wi-Fi or you use LINE? Um, though both are very good in terms of connectivity, the best is always LINE so that it's stable and there's no interruption and the minimal factors. Under. So if you could choose whether to connect via Wi-Fi or LINE, if you have an option, then better to choose the line. So those are some of just the basics. And then figure out what device are you. But this question eh, is not just for you, but also ask yourself, do your students have access to these devices? And which one and what type? Yung laptop ba ang ginagamit? Desktop? Um, for those who want to engage in video uh, conferencing and all, of course, you have to have a laptop na mayroong camera or headset. And then even for... The computer, if it's a desktop computer, sometimes if you have to conduct an online class, then you should have at least a mic or a uh, uh, big camera if possible. And then for some students and teachers, yes, you can use your tablet or iPad or a smartphone, Android, whatever device that you have. But again, uh, merong technical nuances. You have to check if these are capable of um, 
um, to, to the particular software or platform that you are using. Because as we said earlier, connectivity is very important. So always, if it's going to be on a long-term thing, define where you're going to be in your house or in your garden. But baka meron akong minsan nakakamit um, they're, they're ano, sa labas ng bahay. So pag nagsasalta sila, may tadaan pang tricycle. So we hear the tricycle. So again, choose a place where there's minimal the distractions and it's something somewhere the middle, it's a bit comfortable to you and it's a bit secure. Especially remember that a classroom is also, para sabi natin, safe space. So if it's done in a public place where other people can freely see you interacting and even your students' responses, maka merong that has an effect on the safe space of the student. So also give that that security that you are engaging with them privately and also that it is a personal interaction that we are doing. So again, for the last, uh, no, for, I think this is the last for the computer, um, a lot of the platforms, sometimes when we choose our online things, nakakalimutan natin na may system requirements. I mean, for my personal experience, there was a software that I was supposed to install in my computer for a data analytics class. And unfortunately, my computer was not able to handle the, the system. So I wasn't able to learn, uh, apply uh, at that time that particular activity. Hindi ko siya nagawa kasi hindi kaya ng computer ko yung specs ng platform. So if we choose activities that can be done through another software or platform, make sure and check with your students also if your students' computers or devices can actually handle the requirements, the system requirements, or the software or the app requirements of the particular uh, activity or platform na gagamitin. Um, as a teacher, merong mga platforms na free, merong mga platforms na have pay. So just check out what um, uh, what you call this, what particular uh, platforms can be used. One of the platforms that pwedeng gamitin, which I'll share later, is also um, yung Vival's LMS. Uh, they have one for LMS, uh, and then the other is uh, Vival. Um, uh, solutions on the school, which helps you with, with uh, coming up with evalu uh, what you call this evaluating or assessments for students. There's a separate talk on this, by the way, on, I'm not sure, I think Tuesday or Wednesday, just check the Vibal site for this so that you can have more, an intent, more, a uh, little bit more intensive thing on how to do online assessments. So the next C is content and curriculum. So as we know, the, we have this modify this upgraded uh, Zoom taxonomy of learning. Now, this, sometimes the que the depth of our discussion identifies: Are we doing higher order thinking or lower thinking skills? So, sabi paano ko magagawa hindi ba pag online knowledge lang what is what is how. So, um, sometimes it's not just in the framing of the questions that we do for our students. It's also about defining what other materials can be used. And I'll share why it, it's needed na hindi the same plat, the same activity or the same um, online um, software or app yung dapat yung laging ginagamit. You can actually modify it. And, and because there is an actual need to. The, when we talk about um, routine, the routine is different also for modifying our solution. So make sure that when we also do our content, again, balikan natin, ano, kasi I cannot talk about the specific topic because I know a lot of you would be teaching in different levels and in different areas. When we talk about um, teaching in different levels and different areas, we have to realize also that our students also have different uh, knowledge levels. So that when we conduct our assessments or even when we teach, it's not just about engaging them to do or answer things na what is. O kunyari, meron kayong mga question sa, sa, ano, sa, sa, sa online, um, kunyari, you have a video and then like this, you're asking them to comment. Um, don't just do yes or no. Maybe there's also reasoning skills. If you want use uh, Facebook, let's say, as a platform, then you can ask them to comment and then you can also engage. So um, always realize that even you you are just using a different platform. Pero the line of questioning, yung higher order thinking skills, they should still be available. 
um, it is very hard, honestly, I will be also be the one to admit it to you, na napakahirap mag-frame ng question. Kung yung dating regular yung scenario, ang hirap na nga magawa ng higher or JPEG skills. What more in an online platform where it's very easy for the students to copy-paste. Diba? Agree ba kayo doon na um, it's very easy for your uh, your um, um, recall this, your students to just copy-paste answers. Pero, yun nga, as a teacher, you have to come up with safeguards on paano nyo ginagawa yung questions. Do you let separate groups answer different questions? Um, I just have an experience because I saw it with my own dito sa house din. Na may assignment. Tapos, instead na the, the student, yung, yung sa, binabasa yung buong text or the reading material, alam nyo, it's very smart. She typed the entire question. And then that's where she looked for the answers in Google. So sometimes also when we frame our questions, let's be very careful kasi ang stu our students are very te uh, technologically savvy. And then some of them, instead of just reading the entire material, they'll go to the shortcut and you can try it. You can type your own questions in Google and find out if there's an actual answer on it. Because if that is a question, then that is not a measure of a higher order thinking skill, but rather it's just on the knowledge level. Um, a reminder for us all, and it's self-check then for me, the content of the 21st century is not just based on the core curriculum that we set. There are also other skills that need to be taken into consideration. So does this change dahil online yung platform? It does not. So that means that using your core curriculum, you still have to consider global awareness issue. Like right now, there's a very timely situation or a timely issue of um, the pandemic situation, can, which can be used as a springboard to discuss issues on environment, on politics, on decision making, on the arts. So all of these things can be used as a platform. And then also financial, economic, business and literacy, all of these things have to be taken into consideration. And it's, it, you know, it's uh, sometimes it's not a limitation, but it's an opportunity to use COVID-19 situation. Of course, we human not say nobody wants it to happen, but but as a teacher, how, the challenge is how do you use this as an opportunity to teach? Can you use it to teach about economy, about finances, considering the households have been doing this and that? Can you, of course, it's an opportune time to talk about awareness of what's happening to our environment, to our endangered animals. All of this can be sewn together, regardless of what subject you teach. And then what is civic literacy also, mga civic responsibilities and awareness in the environment. And again, we understand that their learning is not just about knowing things, but also about practicing it and living it. So in, in teaching our, when, you, when moving to an online platform, we have to realize that there are also consideration for do, are we able to integrate the life and career skills in what we teach? Ayan, do we have in our lessons uh, valuing on leadership, responsibility, ethics, people skills, adaptability, direction, uh, social responsibility, productivity? I mean, in any subject, pwede nyong ilagay yan. Like in the question, when you frame the question, you can always put a valuing question at the end. And when you talk about valuing questions, it doesn't mean hindi yan nalilimit sa older kids. You can actually teach that to younger kids. Like even, kunyari, let's, uh, let's pick one topic, personal responsibility. Let's say your topic is, I don't know, water, let's say grade 2, 3 content on uh, uses of water. And then you teach them na, okay, um, yan, what are the things that you do with water? And now at, at home, now you're at home, how do you, what, how do you deal with water given that uh, there's a lot of hand washing? So, of course, you, you use water for that. So, what are the tips? Now, you can still save water when you are doing hand washing, considering you have to do it like 20 seconds or something. So, ano yung mga pwedeng gawin or how can you save water given this particular situation as well? I mean, so when, when we talk about these things, there's always a way that we can integrate the, these, not just at a certain level. When we talk about, let's say, grade 6 governance, you talk about um, branches of government. And then you can look at how it is now uh, coming to terms with the situation situation and is, is the branches of government still moving? I mean, at a critical level, can we ask our students na tatanong ba natin, maari ba natin tanungin ang ating mga mag-aaral na kung ano, kumbaga, 
sa iyong pananaw, yung yung pamahalaan ba ngayon na ginagawa ang kaya nila, bakit o hindi? So that's the critical thinking that allows them to move further from this particular knowledge. Kasi at the end of the day, content, there's a debate on content and um and uh, the other actual competencies and skills, what has more weight. At the end of the day, both are springboards of each other. The technical skills, competencies are all um, parang hindi, cannot exist without the other. And you they have to help at a certain balance. Okay. Now, going back to content. Ito, um, when you design your content for online learning, so this will be a challenge not first for the teacher, but for the school. So what are the tools that you can actually use? Um, please understand that some of, I know that some of the schools already have learning management systems, especially yung ating mga naka-subscribe naka kay Vivalda Smart na LMS. That's a, an example of digital uh, management systems. Um, other examples of digital management systems, which I'll flash also later, are the ones, for example, for uh, DepEd schools. For DepEd schools, you have uh, your own, for those in the government, you have your own uh, learning management system. And then there are others now. There are also, so that means it's, what difference does it, the learning management systems put, yun yung mga naglalagay together ng attendance, nagre-records. So, kasi before, you used to have this record book to record your attendance, your scores. But when you have a learning management system, you can actually encode your your grades and I am pretty sure some of the schools who are in this webinar already have that. Then some of us have our mobile apps, maybe linked to learning man our learning management system or not. But sometimes you can have our mobile apps, and then we also have our MOOCs. MOOCs are massive online open online courses. So sometimes they're free. If you want to get a certificate, sometimes they require you to pay a fee. But if you want to just go there for learning or look for resources to share, you can have that. Like a uh, yung mga free natin, marami yan na, uh, uh, like the DepEd Learning Commons right now is one example of a, a massive open online course. Before, it was for public schools. Right, right now, it was also open to private school teachers and schools as well. Uh, we also have um, platform and other mobile reading app platforms that you can actually use. Um, I'll try to share later if we have time what for the 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 there's actually even a, I can share later in the link the UNESCO uh, doc, what do you call this? There's UNESCO compilation of some massive online, uh, open online courses, which you can actually try to explore and try to learn at this particular time. I'd also like to promote, sorry, uh, um, because um, um, I'm also a member of one of the groups that is promoting uh, um, water sanitation and hygiene. There's a uh, ongoing, uh, massive online open course we have on water sanitation and hygiene promotions in the schools. I, maybe I can share the link also later for the teacher. It's also free if you want to join that one. And then um, we also have mobile leading but in collaboration platforms. Like, for example, this uh, Zoom is a mobile col uh, uh, pla collaboration platform. You have GoToMeetings, you have Skype, you have um, Microsoft Team. So there are a lot of online platforms that you can actually do video sharing, engagement. Some uh, mobile collaboration platforms are also available within certain LMS. Sometimes it's a standalone, like for example, Zoom. So, so yeah, for now, do you have any questions on content? But we can deal with that. Because it's very difficult to handle specific content at this point. Because I know a lot of you would be coming from different topics, uh, areas, or subjects. So, meron po ba tayong mga questions on um, the content? I'll be free to share, please be to ask if you want to have uh, links or uh, lists of these particular platforms. And I can, and we'll send it or share it also with you. So, or any questions for, for now? Anyone? And so far, I'm not seeing any questions from our chat box. Any questions before we proceed? Okay. No questions? Let me just check. Last check. Last call. Anyone for questions? Okay. So if there are no questions, so realizing that there are so, oh, and dami palang um, platforms that kailangan gamitin. Don't worry. Because again, you can always explore this at this time, then maybe recommend to your school uh, learning management systems um, for you to subscribe in. Um, and Or 
For, or for example, uh, you can promote with or ask within your colleagues. Yeah, kaya nga collaboration on ano ano ba yung magandang platform? I am not blogger, but ano ba yung magandang uh, online courses that you have or is there? That's why this particular webinar, if you share it in Facebook, let everybody register. So that's an example also. Okay. So wala pa rin pong questions? Okay, so we can proceed. Okay, so the next is one is context. So what is context? Context is understanding what is the current situation that we have. For example, why are we having this online learning? Why are we even considering it? Okay, at this day and age, there is, of course, uh, a nationwide quarantine extended in a lot of uh, other areas, including those who are in Metro Manila. I'm not sure if there are also participants in this of this webinar coming from other provinces. But the particular situation of the the quarantine also limits our movement. So it's not as if before in a parang sanay tayo with school assemblies or having classrooms, uh, students in classrooms. So there's also a shift in this particular situation. Now, whether or not school starts, ng the regular way or meron bang alternative way to do about it, which is also understanding. Kasi sometimes, yun nga, we go back to the statement, new normal. Is it a new normal or we have accepted the reality? But of course, regardless of whatever the situation is, it is better to best prepare for what we have. So knowing the, what is happening right now, we also understand whether or not it's online learning or inside the classroom, our students come from different backgrounds and have different competencies. They are all individuals, uh, gifts of God, as we tell, the, as we say, um, and they have different uh, ways. And it's they're not un, they're all unique in such a way na hindi mo pwedeng i cluster or i map out na parang identical lahat ang pag-aaral at they don't learn at the same pace when you were in the classroom. In the same way with online learning. It, they don't learn at the same pace. Some of them might learn faster than the others. Some of them might understand your concept more because they are coming from a different, uh, but they are more exposed to things or they are more adept in technology. So always put that in the back of your mind. Nung tayo ay nasa regular classroom, iniisip na natin siya. So ngayon, ganun din po siya. Wala siyang pinagkaiba. It's the same. That when you are also... Uh, trying to teach your students, consider that they are coming from different backgrounds, they have different competencies, and they are all unique individuals. And nothing changes, it's just the platform. So understanding the, this, there's actually two, two or three generations right now in school. So if we're talking about this, uh, there's a separate talk on uh, call this the different generations, but I'll just breeze through it so that we understand. Now, it doesn't mean that if you are born at a particular age, I issued that disclaimer, you are with a particular generation's qualities. Um, so there was a time I conducted a test among teachers. Parang, and we tested them and said, okay, this is your generation based on kailan ka pinanganak. But when we administered that, we, we kind of did a short test with them and said, oh, let, let's administer them. Then they realized that, yeah, I'm a Gen X. But my attitude is a baby boomer, or I'm a Gen Y, but my my attitude is a millennial or a Gen Z. So it the way the reason we're clust we clustering is because of the different generations have ex different experiences. There are different historical milestones that they have experienced that allow them to have these particular behaviors. Particularly, one of the determinants of generational differences right now is the access to technology. So given that in the back of your mind, you don't, I don't also put everything na lahat, pinanganak ang ganito, your generation alpha or generation Z. You always have to remember that these just give you a hindsight of what kind of attitudes, competencies our students have and to understand where we're coming from because there's going to be eventually clashes whenever generations clash. So ikaw then don't expect the students, so the reminder, don't expect the students to learn the way you did or as fast as you did. Because they are also exposed to a different, uh, no, maybe like before, kung gusto mag-edit ng video, you go to a video editor. But right now, even elementary or high school students are very adept in technology and can do things that have done by professionals because they have been born to an age of technology. So, so for some of us, yung nanandito sa webinar, malaking adjustment ang technology. Pero para dun sa ibang younger teacher, perhaps, you might be a little bit more faster when you 
you try to adapt to this. And then there are also some naman, we're not blanketing, merong mga teachers dyan na probably you are very, uh, you're still young, new grad, but you're not really that adept in technology. So it, again, it, it this is just, just to understand the learner that we have and then what are the things that they probably value or expose to. Because again, our experiences define how we learn and how we process how, uh, what we learn. So again, even in this particular day, and I, sorry, this is, uh, I got this slide from one of my presentations prior. There are different influencers. So before, tanggapin na natin, nung mga panahong tayo ay kabataan, ang major influencer natin is ating mga, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, huwag naman yung mga umabot sa mga notebook na may artista, no? Pero, merong mga ano sa atin na nagiging, ang influencer, tayo, teacher natin, ang ating influencer, magulang. Ngayon kasi because of social media, there are also other personalities, not just before na parang teachers or pe persons of authority ang naging influence in the behavior and attitudes of the kids or their inspiration or who they want to be. Right now, consider that we are competing with different influencers and different fads that that also before teachers they look up with to him ngayon who do you want to be like yung nakikita nyo hindi na ganun diba when we were kids I could remember like, I would simulate how a teacher teaches or how a doctor does pero ngayon what do the kids do they dance they sing they imitate things and the, they see in the scene because of course the the times have also shifted now what, the thing is you as a teacher are you using this knowledge to your disadvantage or your advantage so as a teacher, do you use your knowledge of influencers and trends and integrate them in, their, in the student's learning? Try, di ba? Rather than to compete with them. Of course, merong disclaimer. Always choose which ones you will integrate in your lesson. Because sometimes some of the influencers may pose a bad influence. And I, I think as teachers, we already know that. That whenever we choose samples or things that we use as uh, inspiration or things that they want to emulate. Uh, kung hindi man tayo yun, let's use positive influencers. At least, that's, let's try to strike a balance. Diba? So, ibig sabihin, it, it tells us what the kids are interested in right now. Dance, singing, um, what to call this, movies and videos, pictures, memes. So, if those kind of interests of the youth in the use of technology can also be integrated in your activities or when you do motivation of how to teach, then that would be a good um, advantage for you. Okay. So, also next, so yun, we'll, that, that's about uh, learning the context of how we teach and the platform that we are actually using and the kind of situations that we are currently uh, competing with in terms of getting our students' attention. Now, Let's go to the next step or let's see communication. So the challenge right now is that we know that communication is more, diba? is it A, verbal or nonverbal? What is the one that conveys our message more? Is it verbal or nonverbal communication? Yan ako kung may mga kasagot sa ating panelists. Dapat yata may prize from Vibal para pag may sumagot. Um, they can uh, they can get a prize. See, which 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 okay. The question is, which communication kind of communication is the one that tra translates or sends off our message more? So, alin yung mas nababasa, mas nakaka convey ng message? Is it our verbal or oral communication, or is it the nonverbal that we use when we communicate? Yan. So magut si Sir Arvin le. Lehes ba yun? Yan. Tsaka sa yan, nagsagutan na. Yan. Thank you, Ms. Digno, Manilito, Ms. Maria, Arvin, Carmi, Roda. Yan. Mga sumagot. It is nonverbal. So, a majority of our communication in our daily lives is more about the nonverbals. Not but just what we say, but also how we say it. So, alam na malam natin yan bilang guro, di ba? Minsan, pag nag-oo yung bata, pero nakasmirk. Di ba? So, ang limitation, um, there's now a limit to the nonverbals that we see in online communication. Diba? Tapos minsan may daya yan. Dahil nakahide kayo, hindi kayo nagpapakita ng picture. Tapos yung pala, yes kayo ng yes, hindi pa, diba? Parang it's the same as, just consider it the same as it's face-to-face -face learning. That um, there are opportunities that that's a limit. So how do you now deal with it? Because you know, we're now limited to 
seeing things. And I know a lot of people in Facebook who have unfriended each other, who have a source of argument just because of a Facebook post, or see how, how dangerous it is to study text without context, without seeing the other nonverbals on how it was done. Um, it's very important for us to understand now we are dealing with online. We are dealing with internet. So if you have been heard about this word, which has been lingering for uh, some time now, it's called netiquette. It's it's a combination of internet and netiquette. So there, if you search this particular topic, there are a lot of rules that you will see uh, in terms of netiquette. Yeah? Um, because again, when we set the ground rules in terms of online communication, um, kasi, oh, I tell even I even tell the students before you know when you communicate to me informally that's fine I mean in a classroom setting with with questions and this but sometimes it, it depends on the teacher what is the limit ikaw ba sa teacher gusto mo English teacher ka so pag nagpost ka ng assignment pag may tanong yung bata pwede bang you your rule now is can you say it in a complete sentence diba because right now diba there's a controversy of senior high school students that um that don't know how to write down. So maybe that's a way that we can develop it. Now, okay, since we are our top our subject is English or reading, can your questions in the com and comments in the comment box be in complete sentences? Yeah. Or in science, you might want to uh, adapt it a bit further. Like like for example, in math, uh, if this is an you, you tell them, okay, instead of asking, you do a uh, do an equation. If your answer is yes, can you come up with an unique equation? na ang answer is equal to 6. O pag yes, pag hindi, yung gumawa kayo ng unique, um, they call this unique equation that ang sagot ay no, pero ang sagot ay dapat equal 10, kunyari. So that means you don't just say single responses, but you allow them to think and formulate individual responses that are not copy-paste. Uh, so, and then developing communication. And then maybe because of when we use language more carefully, then we are more kind of respectful of other people's knowledge. Because it's very easy, like, if you are in the Twitterverse or in Twitter, those who are younger may know what platform I'm talking about. If you are reading there, parang it's always a blurt. So t tell them, dear mga studyante, okay, my dear students, remember that this is not just social media. Online learning, we are in a classroom. So we have to respect the rules of the classroom. We have to respect that um, we, we communicate um, properly. Diba? You don't disrespect your teacher, your your know in a particular platform, but you open have an open um, two-way respect. And in the same way as a teacher also, be careful of the language that you use. Because our students parang hindi you expect you tell the students to speak in complete languages in the chat or in the text, but you yourself judge mo ka na K ano yun? GTG, BRB, or be right back. So you also have to respect whatever rule that you set for your student. Same like in the classroom, it's also something that you adapt with yourself. And then, of course, because we're talking about a social media or we are talking now about an online platform that is accessible to others, there are issues on privacy. And also, and, you know, um, if you are aware of the new data privacy rules, um, especially now that we are dealing with children, uh, please be very careful also in posting um, publicly posts of uh, children and then ayun, exposing them, whatever. And then, of course, this is another thing that I captured from the internet. Yeah, this is a basic thing. Na, you know, just say nothing. These are all professional tenets of professionalism and also of, of uh, what what they call this professionalism and also of online etiquette. Like, diba think before you click. Diba minsan, a lot of us just, oh, nabasa, tinatamad. O naka-free, ano yan? Free Wi-Fi ba? So share ng share. They haven't even verified, especially if it's a very controversial or critical issue. Don't share. In the same way, uh, same with the uh, online platform. Don't think before you click. Uh, verify or validate before you share. And then please be kind because um, we have a lot of disagreements within teachers, within students, if languages are not being careful. Now, even the way you write it, um, I'm not sure, but uh, if you're aware, uh, I think a lot of people, some people kasi are not yet aware that if you write your comment or your post in all caps, it's either two things. It's an emphasis on it. If all, if all the words are in emphasis, then that means you're angry. So you avoid putting your comments or posts in all caps because that means you're angry. 
or don't make yeah, don't make fun of other things, be kind and respect, but also set an example. Because again, it's very important to use clear and concise language. Um, gone are the days ng haba-haba na instructions natin sometimes because our students are now um, exposed to an environment where very short messages. So, ako nga sabi ko, when I do an activity, I always tell my students when I say, okay, uh, how do you frame a question? I say, okay, use the Twitter rule. No more than 240 or yung old Twitter at saka new Twitter rules ang sabihin ko. How many characters when you say your con your conclusion or when you reply to me? Because sometimes, uh, alam niyo man, style. It's a style that some students make that you make an answer long so that you have a good score. But, Okay, but right now, because there are also platforms that also encourage small, shorter responses for brevity, then it now teaches the students to be concise with what they say. And same with us. Because, some, because, because of the social media culture, you know, seems that a lot of people are not already used to reading long, long uh, instructions and all. So keep it simple, keep it but keep it concise and keep everything complete or like that. And then the tone of how we say it because um, yun, there's a lot of people who have arguments and who have misunderstandings over media because sometimes it may sound or it may look like you are angry in your instruction or in your comment, but you are not. So it's very uh, important that when we frame our instructions or our responses to our students, we are careful also of how um, the tone sounds off. Now, um, how do you know? Sabi, eh, I don't know how, if I, do I sound off? I, di naman ako galit, eh. So, I don't know if I sounded off like this in my instructions. Um, sometimes, it helps you ask another person to read it. Oh, can you read it? Do you understand what I say? I mean, that's where collaboration and consultation with fellow teachers also helps. Na parang, oh, can you read my post before I actually post it to my students? Is it already okay? By helping each other, okay, we are also developing a culture of collaboration and we're helping each other proofread our uh, posts and helping each other learn as well. And then, na, 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 ha, ha, na, sasana, na, what do you call it? Na, ha, ha, sa, then, yung skills ng ibang tao because we are helping each other or doing self-correcting and peer correcting. And then, it's also important that when you start your online learning, you also respond to your students and you receive their comments. Like, for example, if your LMS platform that uses, for example, yung sa ating uh, V-Smart platform for teachers ni, ni, na ginagamit na pag nag-submit yung bata, nire-record yung, um, yung response, nakikita doon na na-check na ni teacher o nakita kapag may LMS, eh paano kung wala? So sometimes it is important that you also acknowledge na I've read your ano, receiving, I received this, I read this, or you, you gave them feedback on their score. If it's a normal classroom setting, we give feedback to our students. We acknowledge that we receive it. So the same way, using an online platform. Yun nga lang, we have to do it in another manner. Like we have to text them or email them back. Or in the post that we have in our LMS or in the platform, mag magko-comment ka doon. And then also receive and respond. Um, respond to the students. Yeah. And then again, at the end of all of this, the important thing is it the platform is different, but it doesn't change the fact that as teachers, we are professionals and we have to communicate in a professional manner. Now, it, it, remember to draw the line because sometimes we're using Facebook between a social media or an informal channel with, versus when you are already communicating as a teacher using an online platform for whatever platform, kung, kung anumang platform yung ating ginagamit. And then next, we go to the next C, which is collaboration. It is an important thing that um, this day and age are already tools that you could not think about happening 10 years ago. Like there are collaboration tools that you can share files. Ito, you can chat, you can have a group chat or a GC, or you can have a webinar like this where we have participants from different areas or different schools in the same platform magkakaiba tayo ng location but we are able to conduct this webinar and then tools and then design. Now, um, we are, it's good that you also familiarize yourselves with them. Like for example, if you're aware of, uh, let's say, Google Documents and Google Doc Keep, um, Google Keep where you share files and documents um, or you can collaborate on working as a, uh, on the same file. Pero reminder po, when you do file sharing, please make sure of security and access. Uh, don't 
if if it is especially for an academic work and then you are collaborating on it yung mga estudyante po unang ano ko lang po personal experience also no limit those who will have access to it uh, in the same way when you're in the classroom collaborative learning is limited to a smaller group of students because you know too many cooks uh yun what what's say uh, spoil the broth if there are too many people working on it, it's so hard to keep track of the changes. So sometimes it's good that they work in smaller teams uh, when they collaborate also on files or on documents so that they can also, um, it can also be more manageable. Because whether in person or online, when there's too many members of the team, it's hard to keep track of contributions and changes. So it's better if keep, uh, groups or collaboration teams are kept small but active. And then the online team meetings, yun yeah, um, it's a reminder on file sharing and security. Um, don't make uh, documents always public access. Limit the access of it. Um, we can assist you ever if you need assistance on this particular topic because we only have one and a half hours, so I cannot discuss this in detail. And then online team meetings. So choose the platform. For this uh, particular portion, we are using Zoom, but you can also have other platforms like GoToMeeting, Skype, um, uh, what do you call this? Uh, yung, uh, uh, Microsoft Teams. So there are a lot of online platforms. Um, just a reminder, kasi syempre, some of these online uh, team meetings also have subscriptions. Like Zoom has a reminder uh, subscription na if you're not subscribe to it talaga, you only have 40 minutes. So if you think you're a teacher whose class is only 40 minutes, then you don't exceed that, then, then you go for it. For, for this particular platform. Though, ano lang, disclaimer again, there are also check issues on privacy and security because there are already platforms, actually including Zoom, unfortunately, where there are also possible breaches. Uh, like in the middle of a meeting, somebody can come in. May mga ganong issues that are coming out. So it depends on you if um, how secure you want the meeting to be or what is the limitation in the time that you conduct a class. Paalala po, ah, isang difference po pala ng online learning and distance learning is that online learning, um, hindi, it doesn't mean that if you give the assignment and then pass it and pass the requirements, online learning na siya. There should still be... Uh, some time for you to actually engage the students. So that means you still have to set a time where you can meet the students, whether by groups, individually, or as a class, that you can discuss and everybody's there. That's why you do an attendance check, you do the schedules and all. Now let's go to the next year. I'll be very brief on this, is coaching. Now when you are a teacher, you know that you are one of the roles that we have. is also about being there for our students and then helping them. In, in education terms, scaffolding. Diba? We know that they can learn on their own, can have self-directed learning, but we also should be there for them to help coach them or assist them in the items that are difficult for them. So it is very important to set these particular uh, so ski class, one would be class time. So what is the common time that you meet your class? So always make it a routine. Let's say, okay, class, we will meet uh, this time. Sometimes the schedules may be given by your school if ever you, your school decides to go online. So you, you, you respect the class time pag sinabi na you meet in this class so that you can also monitor your students. Please set a consultation time. So that means as teachers, it's very difficult at this time because, of course, especially if you have a teacher and a parent because Pos, uh, sino ba yung mga magulang dito? Hindi yung magulang na magulang madaya, ah, pero sino yung magulang dito na mga parents? So, kayo, you understand that, of course, you have children who are also students, so you have to teach them. And then, you also have a responsibility as a teacher to teach. So, when you set your consultation time, please make sure that your students know about it and they try to respect it. Because sometimes, we have to set the boundaries on when the students can communicate with us their concerns regarding academics. So the consultation time can be, okay, cl uh, class, parang, uh, okay, our class is, let's say, 10 to 12. Okay, every 5 to 6 p.m. or 4 to 5 p.m., I'm available for consultation on the things that you don't understand. If you need help or you want to go back to something, uh, message me, I'll be online this time. Uh, so, But when you say every Tuesday or every day, 
if you say that it is your consultation time, please also respect the consultation time. You don't say, na, my consultation time is this, and then the students will go to you and you say, no, I'm not available. So always make time. Na you set the time to meet the class individually. You set your time to check your their requirements. You set a time where they can consult you outside their class time. And then you set a separate time. I call it coaching time. This naman is coaching time. It's, it's a little bit step further than consultation. If you want to set also time to get to know your students more, because again, uh, the face-to-face -face interaction is limited, then you set a time to kind of coach them or help them in other areas so that your relationship with your students would still be there. Because regardless of the platform, whether face-to-face -face or online, we should all still maintain our relationship with our students. We are still their second parents. And it does not change that fact. Okay, the next. <laughs> We're almost done. We go to classroom management. Now, classroom management talks about the procedures. So you know what happens in the clue to put it together. Does it change that this is this still need this does this still need to happen? Even if indeed we're not meeting the students face to face. Okay, the answer is yes, because we are still conducting a class. So um, for those others, you might have an issue with the word control or discipline. It's just controlling the environment of the particular class. We're not saying control. So me, I just listed the five key things for online learning from what I think you should focus on. One is keep a schedule. So again, uh, keep a schedule for your class when you when you are going to when you say this is the schedule that you we will meet together. Please also set a schedule on when you will accept submissions and respect it. You also set or the deadlines that you set for their requirements, and then you also set the schedule for the year if you could. Na para, okay, by this week we're supposed to learn this. So you have to always define. Para you also have a plan for what will happen in a particular week on a particular month. Uh, set the routines. Parang if you have routines, like if do you start the class with greetings? Do you, do you start the class with attendance check? So it's very important you have that. And then like what we did earlier, we set rules. What are the rules for the webinar? And then what were the reminders, whether in the beginning and the end? Now, may ask, do you have assignments? Do you have other reminders or questions that we set for them? And the last, which you mentioned earlier, is the relationships. Again, management is about relationships. Our students will not listen to us if they do not trust what we say. They do not trust you. And it's important that um, when we communicate with our students, we Communicate in two ways. There's a professional and personal relationship that we have for them. Professional as teacher and personal because as are their second parents in the classroom or virtual or otherwise, they still have that responsibility so that learning is, uh, is easier. We are more comfortable with the learning environment. So, parang sinabi natin kanina, we set the rules before, for example, you have a session, set the rules before the class, the quarter, in each session. I'll, the, if you recall earlier, diba, this is the rules that I said. Diba? This is the rules for this seminar. So, you can come up with your own. Ako lang, medyo mahirap sa lips eh. I have to make sure I have a rule for listening or interacting. And I have a rule, um, a rule for interactions. And I have a rule for prep operations and submissions and I have a rule for security and safety so it's up to you if you want to set the rules but make sure you're also consistent parang it's a regular classroom setting but it's just an online platform um just a reminder because you know it's very difficult the management diba? Parang the, need, the needs of the students don't change um sometimes diba, there are issues now on online bullying and even comments misbehaviors not submitting Along, parang let's go back to the basic. When our students misbehave, let's also consider the following: that there are also possible causes of misbehavior inside an online platform or on. Oh, no, so we have to make sure that we also give attention to all our students. We are able to empower them. We are always to you know that there are no opportunities that there is unjust, uh, parang unfair situation within the discussions because that will cause also a misbehavior. And then we, we boost their self-confidence. Now, we don't, parang kanina, di ba, we said, listen to each other. So don't say na parang, don't, ano na, don't think na parang, eh, uh, it's a free platform, but we also try to motivate our students. If they make mistakes with their comments, remind the other students not to laugh 
but to help correct. And then we also train our students to also learn to accept feedback so that it also helps their self-confidence and then to assert themselves and their opinions as well. So, so that we also avoid, so that whether it's online or in person, we avoid certain kinds of misbehavior. Now we go to the last so that we're, no, say, I think baka you're already bored with all our discussions. We talk about creativity. Now I mentioned earlier there's a need to diversify our strategies and approaches. We know that students learn using their multiple senses. Students are primarily visual, but I mean, a lot of people are. But it works well when we combine the senses. That is why the computer, you know, it's very hard to compete with the computer with video, with Netflix, with YouTube, and all of those things. Because these are multi-sensory. And you say, it's not multi-sensory, it's just a video. No, it's not. A multi-sensory, they are able to engage with, their, with listening, and then they see it. And then if they use the computer in a game, then it engages their tactile also because now they type, and they type, and they process. So anything that you can look for that engages them down. Now, does it all have to be online? No. Because as a teacher, you can, for example, or take a picture of you cooking, cleaning, and then post it. So parang you also try to look at other experience says that they can engage it. And then look at a, uh, an aspect of being multimedia, meaning I'm looking at different platforms. Wag lagging video, not always video, not always text. You have to modify um, the strategies and use different modes. Uh, hindi yung always discussion. I mean, for older learners, that's fine. You establish a routine. But also for younger, you have to diversify the strategies that we have. For example, one session, young baby, let's look at the younger classroom. Okay, class, let's see. Let's uh, do a, a, a motivation today. Let's see, bring me. Yeah. Can you do bring me online? Yes, bring me. You have them on a video and then you have them to... Um, yet now the bring me, if you think about it, can even be two ways. One can be physically bring me, you have an online class, bring me a, a banana, then everybody runs, or no, not banana, it's difficult, bring me a spoon. So they go to the kitchen, get a banana or, or a spoon. Or you do a bring me, na bring me, but it's modified. Bring me means get a picture from internet, post it. Bring me, bring me internet style na parang bring me a picture. So if you can use the particular strategies that we had even before, just trying to be creative at how it can be adapted to multimedia and also to an online platform. Because again, we have no choice. If the students would not be physically there, then kailangan natin gumamit ng ibang approach o maaring baguhin kahit kaunti yung mga ginagawa natin um, activities para mas we can engage the students because you know there's a uh, the other principle on redundancy if we keep on doing the same things and it becomes so routine it's good that they establish a discipline but it also becomes a hindrance to learning because we they are already expecting what will happen and they will already be expecting what needs to be done. If your routine is, your synthesis is always, okay, what did we learn for today? Then they know how to answer. But if we modify also how we always conclude the lesson or ask them their learning, then that also, uh, being creative at our end, also encourages their creativity and also motivates them to learn. Kasi nga, di ba, parang tayo, if you want to be creative, stay in part as a child. So, parang kayo ba, if you are in their shoes as a student, would you be engaged? Would you be excited to learn? You Would you be excited to go in the class? Um, yan, yan, if you want to be creative, stay in part of a child. Think like them. With a creativity invention that characterizes children before they are formed by adult society. Let's, parang sometimes, let's, of course, this is already a break of the rule and the norm, yung wala, the, the online learning. So, we also have now to Challenge ourselves. Now thinking, how can we now improve? Uh, how can we stay creative? How can we stay open to learning? How can we stay curious in learning online platforms and online learning modalities so that we can be an effective teacher for our students? And dami pa lang kailangan i-prepare. Pero, you know, I'm very, uh, I'm, I'm very uh, proud of our profession because Nung wala pa yung online, nagagawa naman natin. So, in the same way, kaya pa rin natin siya. Kasi, ang pagkakaiba lang ay nagkaiba, nagkaiba yung, yung, yung platform or the platform is different. 
the skills we just have to we just we, we have to understand we also have to adjust our strategies our techniques the way we deliver it the platforms and we we have we study our content we study our strategies it's not the same different from learning what should be done because at this day age of information be ignorance is a choice when we choose not to learn na parang ay ayoko niyan mahirap yan if we shut down our thoughts into what how we can develop um it's a challenge to us because teachers are supposed to be lifelong learners and the question is you ask your students to learn now we ask ourselves do we learn can we learn as well so ito na we're almost at the end now we go now balik sa question are you seeing yourself as an effective online teacher now we have gone through the list of computer content curriculum content context communication collaboration coaching control and classroom management and creativity ngayon can i see nga batting na natin sino yung mga guess anyone who has an idea can guess about the last c that we have Wala. Guess, guess. I'll give you like a count to 10 from the comments box. I will check. Sino po ang makaguess kung ano yung huling C doon sa ating mga tips for uh, being an effective online teacher. So far, walang nagko-comment from ano. Can we check? Sana may price kasi uh, shout out commitment. Yan. No. Tama yan, ma'am. Pero hindi yun yung C ko. Commit. <laughs> Pero kasama yan. Sharp. Ay, abab. I think I should add the things that you are putting down in the list. Commitment, charm, competence. Tama naman po lahat yan. Pero I think we can subsume the charm in ano and then commitment. Lahat po yan important. So very good. At least na suggestion. The last C from my end. Okay. But I think I should add your C's also. Uh, commitment. Because again, uh, we have to be committed to learn. But the C that I put in, which is to me one of the most important things as a teacher, is compassion. So at the end of the day, we are in this profession for our students. We are in this profession so that we have a heart. We are the parents of our students. So we understand that this, this particular period, it's very stressful. It's very stressful for all of us because, of course, we can't leave the house. We're that day. You can just go out to meet your friends right now. Everything is online. Then sometimes that anxiety that you have, that stress is also the stress of your student. So that means we also have to share with our students um, that particular compassion that we have. We, we all, as we said earlier, put ourselves in the shoes of our students. Try to understand them. Hindi ko naman, we're not saying na pagbigyan lahat na hindi makasubmit ng deadline, no. But extending our assistance, we have a heart for our profession, like Ma'am Ano said, somebody said commitment. Yeah, we are committed to our students because we are, we we are one with them. Uh, parang we heal as one, diba? So it's and also because it is uh, our situation and uh, nature of our profession to be a parent, and a parent is all about heart, and it's all about caring for the students and caring that they learn. And hindi lang because sinabi ng school mag online nag online na hindi na natin na-check ang competencies ng ating mga estudyante. So again, so let's go back. Again, reminding ourselves that to be an effective teacher, let's make the necessary preparations for our computer, content and curriculum, context, communication, collaboration, coaching, control, classroom management, creativity, compassion. And add na natin yung mga sinabi kanina, have the charm as a teacher, di ba? Be an online personality. Let's have the commitment also to teach. So, ayun po. So let's just realize that there are challenges of an online learning. So let's not be limited to those challenges. And let's allow ourselves to also be engaged. Sige. For now, questions? Because I think we're almost, uh, the time is up. Um, any questions po from every competence is very important po as well. Um, because it also talks about that's why we're, I think the competence overarches everything because the reason why we are here and trying to listen and learn is because um, of the competence. Let me just check. So questions, wait, let me just check the questions. So for now, can you comment also? You can also, call for those in the Zoom platform, can you please uh, check if you have 
can you please share your comments and uh, for or, or questions before we go any further? So just uh, a little reminder. So again, po, sana to help check. No, sana po everybody's still okay in this time. It's very, they kind of the sometimes or some of us I've talked to some teachers also who feel very bad, especially those who are extroverts. Na sinasabi nila na ano na because they have not been able to communicate well, they have not been able to communicate with their peers and to be able to share. So I understand. I mean, at this time, let's try to help each other. Uh, let's. Ako, I, let's kamustahin din natin ang ating mga sujanda because that's a part of the uh, online uh, learning. Wait, so while we're sharing, I'm supposed to have a game, pero uh, I'll just ask our other panelists, Miss, uh, uh, do we have time for a, a game, ma'am? Ano? Uh, Miss uh, Ann and Miss Ann. Okay. Sige, magtry nga tayo. Kunyari, let's try ito ko very short lang. Um, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with, you know, while, while we're, we, I thank you. Hi, Ma'am Rose. Thank you. For those who have another device, okay, um, let, let's try before we wrap up everything. I just had sample questions for a particular platform. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with um, tag dito, uh, uh, Kahoot platform. For those who are you viewing this by uh, um via computer and then you have a phone with you can you try out um let's let's try to see if you can play this i just have three questions let's see and, and let's see if you can answer i was supposed to be in the middle but let's see how we, if you can still interact while we're waiting for um what while we're waiting for for the questions to come in because i'm still waiting for them to come in um i'll flash it wait if you have a device with you, okay, please log in go to kahoot.com and then yan. Can you please go to kahoot.it kahoot.it and then please go to please go to kahoot.it and then Please log in this particular game pin. Yan. Punta po kayo sa kahoot.it. Wait, I'll post the link here. Sa Yan, Francis is already there. Tingnan natin kung may sasali po sa ating game. Here, Rex. Yan. Log in the game ID. But I just have three questions. Sigdan natin ko ano. I'll give you one minute. Ha? Join na kayo. One minute. If you can actually, ano, so if you say, even if I'm not seeing you, we can have a particular game, di ba? So, di ba? Boy, and we have 34, 35, 36, 7. Sure, let's give it like a minute more and then everybody to send in. So again, um, it, this just come, oh, see, we have 100 players. So it just comes to show that even if you are remote, you're not with your students, there is a way to actually monitor them, but to have to check them. Three questions lang po ang ano, na game natin because we don't have much time. Pero let's see. I see a question from Ms. Jean Zurbano. Uh, while we're waiting for the other participants to log in, um, I'll just answer a question. Her question is, can distance learning answer the needs of special learners who need face-to-face -face interaction hands-on? Yes, but there are particular specifications or special conditions and circumstances na kailangan yung set up for them. Like special arrangements with the parents. On You have to train also the parents on how to help you uh, facilitate the online learning. Na dapat merong tao in the household who will help them to do these particular things. Um, I think it's possible but you really need to have, to have support system for a special, uh, sp uh, for special education. Um, there are special, the skills would be there, special, but you have to make sure there's support from the home and you also have recalibrate other things that you do when you teach. At saka yung content, you have to 
make a customize it so that it can also be suited to their particular situation. And then, while and dami pang pumapasok, how can we promote online teaching if majority of our students don't have internet connection? Um, there are, uh, I can, th there's a long answer to this. Uh, there, the one would be, I think that the Department of Information and Communication Technology um, is already coming up with efforts on boosting internet capability in the Philippines. The other is, it's not all distance, you can also explore other distance learning methods so that, um, like, uh, yung nabanggit natin kanina, through mail, to tele television, to sending them the materials for someone in the barangay perhaps to bring their materials. So maraming ways on using distance learning. And online, if, if talagang hindi possible yung online learning, you can do small group learnings or if not, just go. So I think we come up with, medyo nag-pick na ang ating, nauna pa yung ating list mag-pick kesa sa COVID. Let's start the game. So in your device, okay, please answer this following questions. First question, true or false? Ang mga doktor ay ilan sa mga COVID frontliners? Sa inyong reply, makikita nyo lang ang true or false. So what is the answer to my question? See? Answers are coming in. Yeah. Uh, time. 20 seconds na po. Aba, may nakasagot. Si, ay, nako. Yan. Yeah. Tama po. COVID front trainers. So, this is not a part of the lesson, but it's more of ano. So, doctor sa ilan? Tama po. Ang at 339. Sino yung 141 na hindi na nagsabi ng false? Tingnan natin. Sino ang pinakamabilis sumagot? Si Steph. I don't know where Steph is. Congratulations, Steph. Let's go to the next question. Ano ang ibig sabihin ng COVID-19? Corona video 19? Coconut virus 19? Corona video 19? O Corona bin diesel 19? Parang wala yata yung sagot. Sorry. Sobra ano, Engie. Sorry, there is no right answer. Ano na lang yung pinakakulong? Sorry, wala pong tamang sagot. Pero, sorry, yan po ang dapat. Ito, ito po ang hindi nyo dapat gawin. Gumawa ng question na walang tamang sagot. Ang tamang sagot mo ay coronavirus. Pero sorry. So, again, this is a lesson of do not, what do not to do. Don't come up with a question that there is no answer for. So, uh, next, last question. Ayan, dalawa na lang pala hindi na register. So, si ang top natin na nag-answer, Joanna. So, congratulations. So, Having those platforms, so as we said, having this particular platform, example lang yan, na ibig sabihin, kung nagagawa pala siya, ng, if, if it can be done in this particular, in, in, if this can be done using online, even if we're all in different locations, just imagine how would it be like na ano, um, is, wait, wait, let's answer one question po muna before we proceed. Uh, coaching synonymous to remedial instruction. Um, no, it's diff both are different. I mean, in the same way, you can do coaching for remedial instruction. Um, but it doesn't always mean the same. Because coaching will also encompass online learning, using online learning as a platform to be involved in the students' lives. To also learn about, because remember, when you are as a teacher, hindi lang siya contente. You have to find out, so what's happening at home? So how, how, yung mga situation na alam nyo about the student can also help you to help them learn. But it also, so it's also, can be a tool also for your remedial instruction. Your remedial instruction, you can use your consultation time or other time uh, for that particular thing. So maraming salamat po. Thank you din po kay Ma'am LV. Yes, thank you. Congratulations din po dun sa ating participants for learning. Let's also, and then, sige, last na question na lang po from um, Jo Marie John. What should the DepEd role be in this online learning to support materials to make it effective? Um, and then, any online learning tools that you can suggest? So unahin po muna natin yung um, on, what should the DepEd role in this online learning be? Um, I cannot answer po, ano, kasi I'm also working currently with certain groups in DepEd on preparation for school year 20, the next school year. There are already things that are being prepared uh, in, by government and their schools on preparing if ever online learning can be a platform. Uh, 
we know that there are many limitations and there are many challenges like your Kenya connectivity sa bahay, sa school, what would be the platform that your school or the government might support, kailan ang start ng school year. So all of these things, I think DepEd is also doing what it, what it ha can to also identify the factors that are needed because knowing that we all come from different regions and different backgrounds and different areas with different connectivity, so the solutions are not the same. So the solutions have to be in context and in 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 ano na kailangan intindihin muna anong sitwasyon ng bawat lugar, LGU, ano ang sitwasyon ng bawat eskwelahan at ng mga guro at ng mga mag-aaral before solutions can be laid out. So there can be solutions laid out and then things that and it's not only DepEd who works on this online learning. I don't speak for the government. I don't work in the government, but it's not only DepEd, but it's a it's a community effort. It's a responsibility of the DICT on communication. It's a responsibility of your local governments to invest on or to help your connectivity issues. It's an issue of your schools on what do they help and support. How do they support that learner, the teacher, and how do we support each other? And how does the barangay fit into this picture? It's a community effort. So I'm not saying that online learning is only a responsibility of DepEd and the teacher. It's a responsibility of everyone. Um, okay. Any Anyone? Any, uh, so I think with that, um, we'll remind also everyone, please subscribe to um, Vibal's uh, YouTube, chat, YouTube channel. Um, uh, so that you can also see the, and also subscribe to their FB page so that you can see the wonderful videos and learning and then engage kung hindi nyo kayo umabot sa, sa registration you can still learn on your own it does i mean learning is not about certificates or or the number of certificates or medals that you have learning is about learning learning is about doing and learning is about developing oneself whether or not we get certificates we get medals or we um i know we will have. So um, please also stay tuned. So if there are no questions, I'll hand it over to one of our uh, Vibal part, our Vibal hosts today so that they can discuss. Remember, we talked about learning management system. We talked about learning platforms. Um, we can, um, they will also talk about now an, an example of an effective learning management system from Vibal. Uh, take it away, Miss Julie. <laughs> 